uh, security operatives in Kaduna State, they beg a pardon, in Benway State. Security operatives in Kaduna State say they're working hard to contain activities of cattle rustlers and bandits terrorizing the northwest zone of the country. Now, at least 20 cattle rustlers have been killed and several others arrested in a joint operation carried out in Berningwari and Kachia local government areas of Kaduna State. These government officials are here in Burning Gwari, local government area of Kaduna State, to assess the state of security in the area. Also rub minds with the locals on how best to fight cattle rustlers and other bandits terrorizing the zone. Only recently, more than 2,000 stolen cattle and rams were recovered and returned to their owners. And that's because Kaduna and Katina State government have stepped up measures to flush out the bandits. Katina State was the first state to sit and uh, uh, reach an agreement with those uh, repentants. So whatever they are doing, they are doing it with our advice and our consent. This is an operation being conducted by our gallant officers and men in the bush. Uh, it will interest our listeners to know that most of these animals were even wrestled from Kano State. The strategy seems to be yielding the needed result, but residents still live in fear, and this has also affected business activities. A representative of the Mietiala Cattle Breeders Association believes the only way to deal with the problem is for the Nigerian government to fully implement the ECOWAS protocol of movement of persons and goods. The protocol provided some certain measures to be taken by uh, governments of the West African sub-region. In Nigeria, all those steps have not been taken and therefore you can come in and out of Nigeria at any time at your will without any monitoring. The battle against the rustlers is further boosted by the Nigerian Navy, which also recovered about 500 cattle from the bandits in various parts of Kachia local government area. An operation was uh, launched by the uh, Kaduna State uh, government within the context of Operation uh, Yaki to clear the uh, Various uh, forests. While relative success may have been achieved in the fight against cattle rustling in the northwest, experts say policies such as reactivation of grazing reserves and ranches will perhaps bring the menace to the barest minimum. Meanwhile, the Benue State House of Assembly has asked the federal government to immediately arrest and charge the Secretary General of Mirti Ala Cattle Breeders Association, Mrs. Saleh Al Hassan, for treason. The majority leader of the House, Mr. Benjamin Andain, whose motion came under urgent national security importance, made reference to the treasonable statement credited to the association and published on the, in the national dailies. It claimed the rights of original inhabitation of in, original inhabitants of the Benue Valley and that it will resist any legislation to regulate open rearing of animals. The passage of the Open Grazing Prohibition Bill 2017 by the Benue State House of Assembly on May the 4th appears to have seen some level of opposition, including the killing of 12 persons in Lola Local Council on May the 7th. The recent opposition is an alleged treasonable threat by the leadership of the Mietiala Cattle Breeders Association on page 41 of the nation's newspaper of May the 31st, inciting its members to rise up against the law. The call further renewed fears amongst Benue indigents, including the lawmakers who call for steep penalties. For now, this is not the time for anybody to rise up in any way and incite by saying we are going to mobilize against people. It is highly exciting and I think it's a treasonable felony. At an emergency plenary session, the majority leader spelled out the consequences of Mietiala's inciting statement. The comments that have been credited to Mietiala, the umbrella association that regulates the activities of the Fulani Hesme, is treasonable, it is condemnable, it has the capacity and the potentials of creating crisis and breaching the peace of the people of this state. After various contributions from members, the speaker reads out the resolution. The assembly also calls on the Inspector General of Police to immediately effect the arrest of Engineer Saleh Hassan and Abdullah Ibelu, 
for treasonable utterances capable of causing crisis in the state. The Bernard State Commissioner for Information is asking the federal government to arrest and prosecute the leadership of the group. According to the reports, the association vowed to mobilize headsmen in the country to resist the law as it was a deliberate attempt to enslave their members. The Benue state government condemns the statements of these leaders of the association and their stand, which amounts to an open declaration of war on the Benue state citizens. As both parties pitch against each other, it will be instructive for the security agencies to be on the alert in order to check any breach of peace. And here's Linda Kigbe in Abuja with more on the News at 10. Hi, Linda. Hello, Amarachi. The federal government on Friday alerted the public to the outbreak of the avian influenza or bird flu in the FCT and seven states of the country. Dr. Gideon Shelbwala, the Director of Veterinary and Pest Control Services in the Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development, raised the alert at a meeting with State Commissioners of Agriculture in Abuja on Friday. Mr. Shelbwala listed the states affected by the outbreak to include Bochi, Kaduna, Kanu, Kastina, as well as Nasarawa, Plateau, FCT and Kaduna, which reported a case on May 30th. He said that the disease had spread across 26 states of the Federation and the FCT since it started in 2008, affecting 800 farms in no fewer than 123 local government areas. The Sultan of Sokoto, His Eminence, Mohammed Saad Abubakar III, has commissioned an ultra-modern hospital in Sokoto State. The Sultan described the complex as a radical change in healthcare delivery in the state. He asked residents to take full advantage of the facilities. This is the Sokoto State Specialist Hospital, built by the administration of Governor Aminu Tambuo to cater for emergency operations. Sultan of Sokoto, Muhammad Saad Abubakar, unveiled the complex. Speaking in Hausa, the Royal Father urged the people of the state to take full advantage of the facilities. He applauded the state government for establishing the center, which is expected to provide 24 hours emergency services to patients free of charge. The state government spent over 161 million naira on the establishment of the complex. In a remark, Governor Aminu Tambuol said the center was established to broaden access to quality health care for the citizenry. Health care service is designed to provide promotive and pre preventive health services with a view to controlling, eliminating preventable diseases and disorders prevalent among our teaming population. Programs and projects are being designed towards successful execution of all health care activities targeting mostly women and children, and these two constitute the most vulnerable groups in our communities. The State Commissioner for Health, Dr. Balare Mukakali, said under the Sokoto Health Act, the trauma center would provide free medical services to patients in the first 24 hours. We are also lining up to reflection of the contributing health scheme, which is the equivalent of the National Health Insurance Scheme, the Malaria Elimination Agency, uh, Environmental Health Officers, Ambulance Drivers, Aside from the trauma center, the complex also includes central ambulance service comprising 15 ambulances, blood transfusion center, and biomedical engineering workshop. The Minister of Women Affairs, Senator Aisha Al Hassan, has urged the members of the Boko Haram sect to surrender to the government and accept dialogue to end the insurgency in the country. Mrs. Al Hassan, who is speaking at an event to receive sanitary and health donations on behalf of the recently released Chibok schoolgirls, said government is still negotiating to release more of the girls and other Nigerians in captivity. We are hopeful, just like we got the two uh, fruits of the negotiations, bringing, bringing back 20 first, uh, 21 girls first and uh, later 82 girls we hope 
uh, from the negotiations that are still going on, the rest will be re uh, released to us very soon. And uh, I'm using this opportunity to please call on the insurgents to please, please, please uh, not, not only negotiate in respect of the uh, Chibok girls, but to negotiate and to sit and uh, dialogue with the government, tell the government what their problem is or what their demands are, so that uh, just like we are dialoguing with them and uh, to get the Chibok girls back, that they all they are all Nigerians, most of them, that they put down their tools, their arms, and come back home, and we work together to build a greater Nigeria for all of us, them and us. We support the Chibok girls, and Canada is proud to do so through the humanitarian funding that we provide to the United Nations Population Fund, UNFPA. These girls survived a horrific experience and deserve the support necessary to reintegrate into society with their freedom and dignity, along with the skills and education that will give them the opportunity to thrive. When the news at 10 returns, Governor Willie Obiano encourages crime fighting in Anambra, provides land for establishment of mobile police base in Aguleri. That's when we return. Please stay with us.